look in the camera. You know what I've done that's really retarded is like when they put the, the battery pack on the back of you and then we're done shooting and then we're like... You go take a shit and so uh, on. Yeah, well, and then we're, they were talking to your friend, those guys are fucking idiots. And then you think, like, shit, they're, they're still, they were still on mic. God damn it. <laughs> that's yeah. classic stuff. Yeah. Joining me today on The Culture mm -hmm. Catch is the pop culture artist, Ron English. Ron English started his career at the University of Texas in Austin, mm -hmm. where he painted billboards uh, of a political agenda. Actually, my, my first billboards weren't political at all. They were just, I was using um, the billboards as a place to display my art, because at that point I wasn't able to get in galleries, so I thought, well, this is, you know, I could a 10 by 22 foot canvas right there, free for the taking. That's a great, was it a, a class project? Um, no, actually, the, when, I, when I was at UT, they, they were very nervous about me doing that because they thought, you know, I would get arrested and the implications would come back to them. And if I was turning this in as class projects, that, that it wouldn't work out too well for them. But Austin was always a city of liberalism, wasn't it? In a, in a, in a sea of Republican domination? Except for the art department was very, uh, very straight. Really? Yeah. That's amazing to me. You would think just the opposite, that there would be the bastion of... Well, it's a lot of people trying to get tenure and trying to hold on to their jobs and totally scared. And, and you know, you figure the people that own the university probably don't like a bunch of radicals running around. <laughs> and what year was this? This uh, is right after Vietnam or... Okay, I did the first billboards in like 1982. Oh, 82. So, okay. Yeah. So it was yeah. after that, but you still had the... Right. And, and they, you know, they, they were just kind of weird surrealistic type of things. Like, you know, good old squirrel squirt beer and just kind of like... Like weird ads that didn't make any sense. So. Right. Well, you're still saying something culturally. That's yeah. always been your agenda, hasn't it? I got more uh, political. Actually, after Austin, I met a lot of political people there, and they were like, well, you know, why don't you do something political on the billboards instead of just showing off your art, you know? And I right. think that's kind of where I got into that sort of stuff. But uh, What was the, the impetus for the very first billboard? What, what inspired you? You saw this big, huge potential canvas. <laughs> Well, the very first one I did two, two, two and um, I, I did them for you know my now wife Tarsa, who you've right. met. But um, so I, I I drove her to Dallas, and then I, I left her sitting in the car, and I climbed up on these two billboards, and I did one that said love, and then one that said or one that said lust, and one that said love, and the one that said lust was a bunch of drooling babies, kind of like you know because babies they don't understand the concept of love. It's all about what can you do for me. Right. And then there's a primal. bunch of bunch of old clowns with painted on smiles, which is kind of the opposite. Somebody who's probably really tragic and sad but they're still willing to go the extra mile to make another person happy, and that's kind of what love is. And I was trying to explain that. I was transitioning out of being in lust for her to being in love for her, and you know, in my art student-y kind of <laughs> moronic way, I was trying to say something to her. And then I come back to the car and I'm like, what do you think? And then she kind of looked up and said, you made me late for work for that. <laughs> So that was my first the scorned artist. <laughs> yeah, I got. But but I, they, they, you know I, I kept doing them, and then then other people, other artists started seeing them, and I was doing them more. You know, it's it's for my photography, right? You know, because they were just kind of backdrops for the photography, and then I didn't really think of them as something that stood on their own. So you it, started in photography was your first medium in love, right? Okay. I did the weird trompe tricks, and I did kind of I took things out into really harsh environments, like you know biker bars or whatever and I'd set up my stuff there. Or if I did something outside and there was a billboard in the background, I thought, well, I want that billboard to have something more cool on it than, you know, cool cigarettes. Right. I want it to have something that, that relates to my picture. And, and since all my pictures were like, no matter how strange they got, it was really what was happening. I never did any kind of manipulation in the darkroom or anything. So I, I was kind of stuck in a corner where if that billboard's gonna end up in the shot, then I had to go change that billboard. Interesting, interesting. So, uh, but, but the thing is, is like once I'd you know, done the billboard, then after I've left, then the billboard stayed up, and then a lot of the young painters in Dallas started seeing the billboards, and they actually came to me and said, can we have your permission to do billboards too? Wow, <laughs> I'm like, that's interesting. Well, it was interesting. I don't understand why they asked my permission. Maybe it's because you know, they, they thought, well, that's his concept. Yeah. So what we did is we formed a group called the New Urban Aesthetics Committee, and, and then every two months we would go to like Houston or Austin or San Antonio, and we would just whack out like 20 billboards and then we would get a keg of beer and have an art opening underneath of them that night, you know? And, and there'd always be music. Because I know with Ron English, there's lots of music as well. Well, I know with painter, his stuff is pretty high. With Mickey Mouse's Marilyn's and Elvis' sky. I'm not an artist, I don't understand that stuff. But he'll explain it to me if he's drunk enough. Ron English. Ron English. Ron English is a painter who will make it I don't go to art openings, what purpose would it serve? Unless I hear the serving free wine and hors d'oeuvres. But I'm a 
up to an English show when one is in town Ignoring all the paintings like the rest of the crowd Run English Run English Run English is a painter who will make it in the nineties, I know Cause it's old, cause it's old, cause it's old, cause it's old Yeah, well, you know, I, I went to north of Texas, so like when in my, my house, I had this big house with graffiti from top to bottom, and... You didn't go to University of Texas? And I didn't have any... Yes, I did. I went there to graduate school. Oh, for grad school. But, but yeah. in, in uh, Denton, I had a big okay. old white house, and then one time I had a graffiti party and let all the artists from the art building come graffiti my whole house from top to bottom. Really? And then um, then, then I, I, I didn't have a stereo, because I really never had that much money. Right. And then, then I figured out, well, I could let all these bands because you know it's a big jazz school and everything and there were right. punk bands and everything you could think of there and I said well if I just let them all rehearse at my house then I always have a band playing you know so usually they would rehearse you know during the day when I was in class and stuff and then on the weekends we'd throw big parties and it would just be constant flow of bands going through there. Anyone famous? Um, Michelle Schock played, Daniel Johnson, right. different people like that. Yeah. And those people I mean, you've no, in Nobody huge. Um, REM played but they actually played, um, I had a, a party in Dallas, I had an opening and they, they um, I was a sitting in the office before the opening and I was again going to have a couple of my friends bands play at the opening to kind of get more people to come in. Right. <laughs> you know art doesn't attract that many people. But um, yeah so I'm sitting in there come and then on, the phone sure rings. It does. <laughs> and you're a very successful uh, well healed but, artist but you these can't, days. You don't pack them in you know, right, like okay. musicians do. True. But yes yeah, so the phone rings. and, and Art I, groupies I, are I, a little different. Yeah. I, I pick up the phone and this, this guy goes uh, what's going on there tonight? And I said oh I'm, I'm having an art opening here and then a couple bands will be playing and it'll be like a big party and he goes wow that's great. Um, well, could, could I play? You know, I have a band. Could I play? And I'm like, uh, well, what's your band? And he goes, well, I have a band called R.E.M. Could, could we come play? Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Michael Stipe. Uh, let me introduce myself. And I'm like, okay, sure, come play. You know, it's a, re it's a relaxed atmosphere. And then, then you know, he, he said, okay. And then he hung up. And then, then the phone rings again. He goes, uh, Ron, it's, it's Michael again? And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, there will be beer there, right? <laughs> like, yeah, there'll be lots of beer. So, but yeah, I had a lot Sex, of wild people Sex, drugs, and rock play. and roll, man. You gotta have it. Yeah. Oh, check.